If you're used to collecting summaries of your papers and other research notes together in Word, then today I'm going to show you how you can set up a Protolith workspace to continue using those templates like you're used to, but with the added benefit of being able to transform that information into tables so that you can start to pull related information together in different ways and use that knowledge that you've accumulated in your work. So first, let's talk about setting up your template in Protolith in a document style. So I'm going to add a table into Protolith and then I'm going to change the table type to a vertical view. And that kind of transposes the table so that the columns are now viewing as the titles of rows. So I'm going to add a title to the table and then this will be the title of the paper that I upload. We'll come back to that. But I'm going to set up the headings from the word templates that you've been using. So to do that, I'm going to open up this properties menu. So first up, I'm going to add a citations property because that will automatically pull reference information from any of the papers that I'm uploading into this workspace. And you can choose from a few different styles here in the citation property options. I'm going to move that one up so that it sits directly under the title of the paper. And that will also automatically be populated when I add a PDF into the workspace. And on Protolist, you can extract highlights from your different sources as atoms. So I'm going to set up an atoms property and add a filter for each of the different questions in that template. And as I type that in, it comes up with add background as new page. So I can select this. I'm just going to add it into the sidebar and tidy it up later. And so now I've got an atoms property that is filtered by background. But any of the atoms that I drag out of a paper and drop into this field will automatically have the background label added to them. So you may also be familiar with labels referred to as tags. And on Protolist, any of the tags that you want to add globally across your entire workspace, you need to add as pages. So as I set up this template, I'm going to be creating new pages corresponding to the different questions from my template. Then I'm also going to add in an image property type for any of the figures that I might want to capture from the paper and have to hand. And I'm also going to make use of a multi-select property so that I can start to organize my papers by keywords. So any of the topics that are relevant to my project, I'm going to add in here and I can add as many of them as I want to label and sort the papers based on which topics they are relevant to. And so in my document style table, I now have it set up somewhat similar to the kind of table structure that you would have within a Word document. And you can add any other properties to capture any of the other information that you're interested in having in your summary. So let's grab a paper and get it into the workspace. So I'm going to open up this page and because this page sits within a table and we've added a load of properties to that table, all the properties list here. If we scroll down a little bit, you can see that there's a few different page type options to set up the page. So I'm actually going to do a file upload, grab one of the papers. And as I hit upload, it will upload the PDF into my workspace. It will automatically grab the title and the citation information and populate those properties. So we have our reference ready to go wherever we might be using our atoms. And so you can work through the paper. As you come across interesting bits of info in it, you can highlight the text and this capture atom button will appear. And we're going to do a slightly different workflow because we can drag and drop the text into the corresponding property. And when we drop it, the atom will be created. And where we've set up the filter, it will automatically be labeled as a piece of background information. And so you can continue doing that, working through and reading and adding the relevant bits of information into the different relevant categories. And if there are any images that you want to add, as we did add this kind of figures image property, you can screenshot the image in the paper and then click on the image bar and then paste the image in. And this will add your image under figures. And you can add as many images as you like. So I've shown you how you can lift and extract highlights from the paper. You can also add annotations in. So whenever you've captured an atom, this box appears and you can type in an edit in this box. So you could rewrite the entire sentence in your own words if you wanted to. You could add in further thoughts and ideas that have been sparked as you captured that piece of information. You can do whatever you like. And then that annotation is saved alongside the atom text. So you can lift and extract highlights from your sources. You can also create your own atoms manually. You can use this add atom button and then you can type in whatever it is that you want to type. So I've added in a key takeaway there. 
So you could add as many of those as you wanted. And then once you're done, we can go back to the research notes table and all of that information, which we were seeing in the properties sidebar is now displayed in the page. So you can view it and scroll through it very much like your Word document that you're used to. If we jump back to the table style of the document, we can set this up to display specific properties that we want. So you could have no atoms displaying, just the paper and the citation. You could also add in your key takeaways property. So you've got your summary of what was contained in the paper, but you could have any combination of properties that you wanted in this view. And so if we talk about the multi-select keywords property, so in a multi-select, you create a list of options and you can add as many of those options as you want to any of the rows in your table. You can also do things like edit the keyword and change the color of it. So I'm gonna add a few more papers in here. And to do that, you can drag and drop a selection of papers onto the table and they will all automatically be uploaded and imported one paper per row in your table. And the citation information should automatically be retrieved and added into the citation property and update the title of the paper in the name column. So if I jump back to our document style view, we'll now have several papers in our document that we can scroll and browse through. But let me grab a few more atoms from all these different papers. So you can collect atoms by opening up the properties tab when you've got the paper open, but you can also keep this document style table open and have the paper up alongside. So if you control and click on this open, you'll get the paper open on this side of the screen and still have your table open on this side. So as you're reading through, very similar to before, if you come across bits of information that you want to save and add into a particular category, you can drag and drop the information into the corresponding spot and it will create the atom and also add that tag. So now I've made my way through a few different papers. The document style table is starting to populate and fill up in all the different categories that I like to collect the information around. So I can browse through it somewhat similarly to scrolling through the Word document, but then I can also have the advantage of tables to pull different bits of information together. And in this way, you can take all of that information that you've collected kind of document style and pull it into a bit of an overview. So you can start to see all the information from all of the papers in this format. So you haven't got to scroll through the document and pull out the relevant bits and put it into another document to get it all together. You can also make use of filters to display papers that meet a certain criteria. So we added in a multi-select property keywords. And so we can set up the logic of this filter to show or hide papers where we've added or not added particular keywords. So if we wanted all of the papers for hydrogels, we could set that up and you can see we've got just four papers there. If we change that to 3D printing, we'd see just the papers that we had categorized as 3D printing. And again, once you've added that filter, you can show and hide the particular properties of interest. This gives you a few different ways to kind of search through all of the information that you've collected on your papers. And if there's particular combinations of information that you want to save and often come back to, you can create a table view that saves the different filters and properties that you want to display each time. So at the moment that is just one, but as you add more into your database and make use of those keywords, you'll start to build up your collection of the 3D printing papers and you could always come to this view and see all of them. And then as can often be the case, at some point in the future, it might be that you want to collect specific information that perhaps you didn't collect earlier on as you were reading the papers. And so at any point in the future, if you wanted to search through your entire library for specific bits of information, you have a list of your atoms, as well as a list of all your pages here in the all pages section of your workspace. So you can search by keyword and it will search through all of the atoms that you've captured, as well as the contents of all of the papers that you've uploaded into your workspace. So if that keyword is mentioned within a paper and for whatever reason you hadn't captured it as an atom, you can still find and locate it. So I'm back in my 3D printing overview of the table with my one paper. Um, if I decided that I wanted to start writing something, writing up something about 3D printing, I've got a summary of all of the information that I've collected from the relevant 3D printing papers. Um, I can start writing it and I can drag and drop the atoms into the page and that 
put the atom text as well as any annotations that I might have added to that atom into the page, automatically creates a citation and pulls the reference information that's in the citation property for the paper into the page. So you can start to write without having to go retrieve or look up the references. So hopefully that gives you a flavor as to how you can take your current system, uh, map it onto Protolist so that you can more efficiently navigate all of your information.